You know what I love about us? Me and you. When they go low, we go high. When they go sheets, we go wawa. When they TikTok DIY moon mirror, we 3D printed NASA topographical accurately displaced Earth mirror them right back. Because we're bored. And they can too, maybe, someday. When they're bored. When you're when you're bored. What did I just say? You might be wondering. I saw this TikTok of this person who made a round mirror into this moon type waning crescent, if you will. And I don't know about you, but I like the moon. So I decided to make one myself. I found this little round mirror at a thrift store for like three bucks. And then I also got some spackling. To make sure the spackling would stick to the glass, I took some sandpaper and I scratched it all up where the moon was gonna go. And then I just sort of started smearing spackling all over it and kind of shaping it to get the craters and the look of the moon. And that was fun, don't get me wrong, I had a great time. But if you watch my videos, you know that I don't stop until it's a lamp. <laughs> Just kidding. Well, not really, but what I was gonna say is I like to find inspiration and then find ways to make it unique and make it mine. That's where I have the most fun. So here's my idea. I wanted to get a bigger mirror and turn it into the earth. And I figured there's a few ways I could do that. I could do it like the moon mirror and kind of sculpt it by hand and take some plaster and maybe paint it to look like the earth. But if you've ever tried to like hand draw the earth, it just never ends up looking right. So instead I decided I was gonna 3D print the continents because then I don't have to do it by hand. But it does mean I need a 3D model of the continents and I'm overwhelmingly lazy. So I'm gonna use something called a displacement map. And this is one of those situations where your laziness actually makes you look way smarter because you found a more efficient way to do something. Anyways, I'm not that smart and displacement maps are actually pretty simple. They're basically a black and white image that can deform geometry. Black parts of the image mean don't move this part and white parts of the image mean move this part as much as you can. And that means gray parts of the image just get pushed a little bit depending on how bright they are. In other words, the brighter the pixel, the more the geometry it's mapped to gets deformed. And since images can have so many pixels, it can end up being a really accurate way to model something in 3D. So if I wanted to replicate the continents and all their geographical features, I could get a displacement map of the earth and map it to a plane and it would end up looking way better and being way more accurate than if I wanted to sculpt it by hand like I did with the moon mirror. But where can I find an accurate displacement map of the earth? How do you even make one of those? Well, if I had a satellite, I could do it. I'd probably just shoot some sort of radio wave down at the earth and measure the time it takes for it to get back. But I don't have a satellite yet. But NASA does, and they actually already did the radio wave part. So they have these super accurate topographic maps and they happen to be perfect displacement maps. And they're so high definition that it would take 110 TVs just to show them in HD and they're all online for free so that people like me can make videos about TikTok trends. NASA, we don't deserve you. So I opened up Blender, I made a plane with a bunch of points on it and I used NASA's maps to displace it like it was nothing. You can see as I increase the amount of geometry, the detail of the displacement also increases. And then I just had to clean up the model a little bit, scale it to my mirror, cut it into a bunch of smaller squares so it would fit on my printer and then it was ready to 3D print. I printed it in 14 pieces and they each took about two hours. And you can download the model for free on my site, yoitskevin.com, as long as you use the code MOON at checkout. I laid out the pieces on the mirror to make sure it was scaled right, and then I just needed to attach the pieces to each other somehow. They were too thin to glue, so I broke out my soldering iron and I carefully melted the edges of the pieces to sort of fuse them together. And I didn't think that would work, but it did. You could still sort of see the lines from the pieces, but I have a plan to cover those up. Once the continents were pieced together, I sprayed them with primer and I started to paint them. And I used this super detailed topographic map as a color reference. I sort of like to imagine there's little people on these continents and I'm adding just a touch of color to their lives. <laughs> So I painted the whole thing, making sure to add snow to the tops of the mountains and bringing ice back to the Arctic.
And since the moon mirror was sort of like a texture study, I wanted to kind of mimic that with the earth. So I got this scenic cement glue. And I also got this blended turf stuff. Which is really cool for like model making. And I attached a spray head to it and I sprayed a layer of glue onto the continents. Then I sprinkled on the turf trying to match the color of the landscape. And honestly, I've never used this stuff, but I think it ended up looking really cool. I sprayed one more layer of scenic cement to really seal it all together. And then it was finally time to glue all the continents onto the mirror. Whenever I'm gluing glass or metal or any really smooth material, I like to use E6000 glue. It works wonders and if you mess up, you can kind of like scrape it off the surface. It's super forgiving. And it's finally done. I'm about to show you it, but before I do, I want to take a second to talk about NFTs. An NFT is just digital art that's protected by like this fancy blockchain computer code that allows people to own digital art like it's real art. And they're starting to become mainstream. So I decided that with every project I make, I'll also release a digital version in NFT form on my website, yoitskevin.com. And you may be thinking, why would I buy a piece of digital art if I can't physically have it? And that's a fair point, but here's the catch. As my YouTube channel starts to get more and more popular, my NFTs will most likely appreciate in value. How much value? Well, it's hard to say, but to give you a sense of scale, an artist by the name of Beeple just sold an NFT for $69 million. So the sky's the limit. But when it comes down to it, if you buy my NFT, you're just investing in me and the growth of my channel. And and I'm gonna try to make you rich. There's a very limited quantity available right now on my site, yoitskevin.com. Okay, enough. Let's see the final product. How this one turned out i love how it looks on my wall thank you so much for watching like and subscribe if you've liked and want to subscribe <laughs> i'll see you next time peace